Welcome to Knock Bro Nation. What's up, guys? Hey, guys. Today we're here to do our review of Walking Dead issue 170, yes. On the Road. On the road again. On the road again. Just I can't, can't wait to get on the road again. <laughs> to kill the walkers on the road <laughs> as we go to Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> this was a great issue. I love yeah, it. it was a. Uh, it jumped around quite a bit. It did jump around a bit. Yeah. Um, so we're going to kind of do this review a little bit different. We're not going to do page by page, but rather story right. line by story line. So cool. Um, let's start with Negan's story. Let's do it. Yeah, that was interesting. Uh, so we kind of the first part that we see of Negan is he's fighting walkers. Yeah, he's just going yeah. crazy. He's throwing out awesome one-liners. Mother f this. Mother f that. And by the end, he's just like, man. I should really save those for when people are around because <laughs> because they were great. It yeah. was awesome. He was just handling them one by one, just taking them on. Man. Yeah, I love that. Sweet. And we get the scene where he is actually uh, he goes back to visit Lucille's grave, not the mm -hmm. living or his ex wife Lucille, right. but the bat, the bat, Lucille the bat. And it would, this part was really I could have I could have gone without seeing this part. You know, I mean, all he said was, you know, I, I've missed you so much and you've, you, I think, I mean, you've given me so much strength and I, I kind of, I, 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 I could have gone without it. I think he says somewhere along the lines of, I know this is stupid, but you meant a lot to me right, or yeah. something like that. Look, he, he clearly, uh is symbolizing the bat with with the yeah. actual lucille true um right. and i think he actually said something like i never really knew that i cared until i lost you or something like that yeah. I, I think i could have gone without it but it was cool to see and you know of course we see dante was watch has been watching him the whole time he's following him finding out where he's gonna go so he was watching him as he was fighting the walkers and he was watching him as he was at lucille's grave so. yeah so again i really gotta wonder what's going on there yeah it was interesting, though. It was cool to see some Negan a little bit. Yeah. So speaking of Dante, we actually uh, will we'll jump into the next storyline, which is Maggie and the Hilltop group is yep. actually making their way back to the Hilltop. Yep. Um, it starts off with... I, I can't, I Brianna. Can't, Brianna? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brianna, yep. you know, basically saying Maggie, Maggie. She's talking to Maggie about right. Dante. Yeah, she says, Dante, you know, I wish... Uh, Dante's like, I don't know, dry sense of humor, or he's like a really funny person. Yeah. You know, he, he makes these trips go a little bit faster, you know, because yeah. of, I guess, Dante is the comedian or something in the group. Yeah, and, and this kind of brings it back to Dante obviously wanting to be in a relationship with Maggie and Maggie. Mm, uh, yeah. I think the last that we kind of touched on that was Maggie basically saying to Dante, um, I will never love anyone like I loved Glenn. Right. Um, I have no intention on being in a marriage, let alone Any relationship. even a relationship yeah. with no, anyone. No, no, no. Yeah, like, so she is... <laughs> Plain out, flat out, not interested. Yeah. And you kind of got to wonder, you know, she's staring off. She's not listening to Brianna. She's not listening at all. <laughs> at all. And you got to kind of wonder what's on her mind. Is it Dante or is it Negan? I think it's Negan. I think it's Negan too. I think that, yeah, I think, she, I think she's worried. You know, she even says, um, you know, I'm sorry, were you talking? Yeah. <laughs> she's like, yeah, I've been talking for like 20 minutes. But I think she's worried about... Dante and also Negan. You know, where is Negan going? And also the making sure, I think probably also making sure that Dante is still alive and keeping the distance and not getting himself yeah. in trouble. I mean, look, you kind of got to be, you got to think that she's kind of worried simply because of the fact that uh, here's my husband's killer, just let alone, let roaming on the loose. So right. um, she's obviously distracted. So we actually get Maggie ac making their way back to the hilltop mm -hmm. and they run into William from the kingdom, yeah. the leader of the kingdom. Yep, William from the kingdom. And he's saying, you know, I have some supplies and I'm, you know, they're on their way to the hilltop as well. I'm coming yeah. to, you know, bring our supplies to give to you and also to help you know, rebuild the hilltop with you. Yeah, nice gesture. And Maggie yeah. obviously says, you know, you didn't have to do this. Yeah. Uh, and he says, it's no problem. You know, it's just, it, the big problem is actually just getting the supplies here. Uh, they're already here now. Right. Uh, and obviously they're going to start helping rebuild hilltop. So yeah. we get another uh, kind of reaffirmation of William being mm -hmm. a strong ally to Rick oh, yeah. and Maggie and, and the crew. Yeah, so. that was good. And, yep. you know, Maggie, as you you know, you can see in the panel that Maggie was just kind of taken back by the gesture. She's like, no, no, no. But he's like, look, you know, we're, we're here to help you out. 
and do whatever we can. So, yep, it's good. So, uh, back in Alexandria, mm. <laughs> <laughs> we have Rick um, opening the communication of Rick and um, Jesus. Help me. Yes, Jesus. Rick, Rick and Jesus yep. are having a conversation, and Rick is asking him to, you know, would he look, watch out for, not really watch out. They don't even say his name at first. But yeah, they don't. They're just, like, they pick up mid conversation, and, yeah. and you know, he says, "Do you think you can watch him? Watch him for keep him. an eye on keep him. an eye on him for him." Which you're talking about, Dwight. Yeah, um, you know, because Rick says he he believes that Dwight is a good person. He's a good man, but after everything that went down with Sherry. He just doesn't know if he's just going to fly off the handle and be volatile yeah, or doesn't what, know where his so. mind is at right yeah. now. Yeah, And Jesus is like, yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah, you which know. is really weird. We'll get into that in a second. But, <laughs> but we cut to Dwight and what appears to be an actual savior. Yeah, Laura. Laura. Yeah. 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 And so Laura is basically saying to Dwight, you know, you don't really... You don't really believe what you what you're saying. You you don't really think that Rick is a, a bad person and and that you met that you wanted to take over. And mm-hmm. he's like, honestly, I think I should have done it sooner. Well, what was interesting about that part too is that she she gets on Dwight. She's like, um, you know, I can't relate to the you know for you losing Sherry, but I don't like what it's done to you. Mm-hmm. Um, she calls him out and says, you shouldn't have threatened Rick. Yeah, you shouldn't have done that. And Dwight goes into saying, I should have done more. Because he, right. yep. he compares Rick to Negan, saying, you know, Negan was a um, uh, dictator. Uh, he type. was not a dictator, but he was essential to, you know, the community. He was a protector of the people, and he compares Rick and Negan the same. Yeah, he, yeah. So he pretty much goes on to saying, you know, Negan did whatever he could to ensure the survival of his people. Right. Um, which is, in a way, what Rick does, but Dwight's obviously lost. A little bit of reality or a touch of reality so yeah um we kind of get that shock in laura's face that you know dwight really does feel this way and yeah. we don't know yet if it's just remnants of losing sherry or not it's obviously has something to do with that but mm-hmm. again so we're kind of opening up different facets of this story now yeah. so it's it's interesting to see where this will go in this arc yeah and so, kind of keeping on with Jesus, uh, right. yeah. we kind of cut to Jesus and Aaron having a pretty nice moment, cool conversation together. Jesus is talking about, you know, let's let's go to the hilltop. Yeah. Let's move, Which actually, I, to the I hilltop. I was very shocked about that simply because, and he does mention, uh, we just got finished seeing a panel of Jesus telling Rick, um, I'll keep an eye on Dwight. Now, he right. does mention it's been a few days and Dwight's not yeah. doing anything, but yeah. that's only a few days. Right, it's a few days. And Dwight could be putting up a front for right. all we know. He's just hanging about. He's not, you know, you know, being around Rick. He's just kind of being off on his own. So being around a couple days, but Jesus is ready to go, and he's ready to go with Aaron. But Aaron doesn't feel that he's ready to go because he doesn't feel 100% recovered yeah. from the injuries he sustained from the Whisper War. But... Um, it's he, just weird he's ready to that go. Jesus already wants to leave. Now, yeah. I get it. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out as well. Um, but we also get Jesus professing his love for Aaron. Yeah, yeah. Which, which was is, pretty cool. Which is pretty cool. Tells yeah. him that he loves him. And uh, it, was, it was a really nice moment to see. It kind of, you know, it... What was great about this comic is it jumped around different spots. So you got to it see did. some intense stuff, and then you got to see some lighter things. Which, and it was really, you know, really it great. It was basically something that I wanted to see in the show. Yeah, yeah, Them yeah. jump around a lot. And we did get a lot of episodes, and I don't mean to talk about the show, but right. we did get episodes where it would bottle episodes where they're just concentrated on one person, mm-hmm. Tara, for instance. Right, um, yeah. So it was cool to see them jump around, and they have done that in issues before, but I just thought it was really neat. Nothing like that, yeah. So, where, that, do, we, where do we end up now? So now let's talk about the group. We yes. got uh, Eugene, Michonne, uh, Magna and Yumiko and Sadiq. Sadiq, yes. Yeah. Uh, so the group is actually on their way to Ohio. Yep. yep. Uh, to meet up with Stephanie yeah. from the radio. Um, so we get to the point where they are kind of they're in the safe zone still. Mm-hmm. Um, they're traveling throughout the safe zone. Uh, they they meet a uh, a lookout. Uh, part of probably the military or assigned right. specifically in the safe zone to look out, make sure it is a safe zone. Mm-hmm. Um, and that person says, uh, all clear and even a couple miles out. Yep. A couple miles out. Clear. It's somebody from the kingdom cause he's got the armor on and stuff like yep. that. Um, so he says he's done his route. He's, you know, everything's all quiet. 
And even at the beginning beginning of the comic, you know, uh, Michelle or not Michelle Michonne mentions that it, you know, it's you know we're still in the safe zone. It's quiet. And what was strange is that Yumiko has been. He's, she's like so excited. She's like, I have not been this far north forever. I'm so excited. And yeah. Michonne like gets really quiet. And even Eugene asks her. He's like, Are you all right? And she's just like, She's making me worried. Like. <laughs> something's like something's gonna happen to her so but you know they get notified that you know everything's all clear and you know they proceed on um uh, but he does say one thing he one thing he does say i think i got it wrong is a couple miles out he has no clue he has no idea yeah. anything past that extra mile yeah. he has no idea so yeah. they know they're going into possible danger which though. this is probably one of the more exciting arcs that i like yeah. i like groups out we're actually getting to see Stuff that we haven't seen in the apocalypse since early issues. Early stuff, yeah. There hasn't been a lot of just single like we've been groups in, in a, go out. We've been in Alexandria for, gosh, over 70 issues at this point, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. So, you know, no one has actually gone out in a group stage. So, it's I like it. Yeah, it's, I it's do. It's cool to see. And so, they get to, um, they kind of are camping for the night. And <laughs> so, Eugene, you know, asks, tells Sadiq he's got to go to the bathroom and he'll take watch when he's done. And... So he goes and, you know, does his thing and he hears a little wrestling and he turns around and it's actually Magna and Yumiko in the same sleeping bag making oh, out. Hooking up. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so who knew that they were, you know, a couple or whatever, but. That was awesome. They're hooking up. And <laughs> what's strange is that Eugene just stand there watching in a way, but also I think he feels, you, you kind of see some sadness in his eyes. Yeah. You know, and um, he feels sad for whatever reason. And then. Yeah. All of a sudden, we get an attack, and Michonne is actually getting attacked. No, it was uh, Sadiq. Well, Wasn't they showed it? Michonne first. I think they showed Michonne getting attacked first, and then they, uh, I think That's right. she said to go check on Sadiq, and uh, Eugene is running to Sadiq, and he's surrounded. Yeah, he's I, I he's about it, to die. I honestly thought he was going to get bit. I thought he was going to get bit and die. Yeah. But Eugene went full-on gangster mode, man. Like, <laughs> one of the panels that shows a walker, he blows his eye, like a bullet comes out of his eyeball. You see the eyeball Hank coming out. It was sweet. Yeah, Eugene, that was awesome. Eugene saved and, and, Sadiq's life. Yeah, and Sadiq's, you know, obviously says, you saved my life. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, one of the coolest parts I like of that is Yumiko uh, says, uh, well... She they, calls him out. Or yeah, Magna, I think it was. You know, they, they all uh, check if they're all okay. Yep. Um, and... Uh, what did they call him out for? I forgot. Magna called him out because she was like, hey, you were on watch. That's right. Sadiq wasn't actually right. you know, being that attent and aware yeah. of the situation. Right. So he got called out on that. Uh, and then Yumiko says, well, we, we weren't going to get much sleep anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and Magna's right. like, very funny girl or something like that. Yeah. And so kind of, I think either Eugene or you know, Michonne calm the situation down and say, let's not put blame to anything. Sadiq yeah. was like, they came out of nowhere, the darkness, I couldn't see him. But Eugene is like, we have to go. Because there was a gunfire. gunfire. Yeah. We have to get out of here. We can't stay. And so they push on and we get to an edge of a city. And from what I found. Which really quick yeah, was yeah, really yeah. cool because the panel shows. It's one of those awesome Charlie Adler panels where it yeah. shows the entire cityscape. Right. Just awesome panel. Because they're yeah. on the bridge and what the skyline is, I believe it's Pittsburgh. They're, yeah. in, they're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, because the bridge they're crossing would be the yellow bridge that you've seen. And also there's a specific building there that kind of comes to a T. And that is like, um, and also for what I've found online, it is Pittsburgh. So they're standing at the edge of the, of the cityscape and they're standing on the bridge and they're just contemplating like, you know, they know what they're getting into. They know the risks. They haven't really seen anything yet. But they're going to go in. Yeah, and so. this was really cool because it kind of gives a shout out to a, a little bit of the movie as or, or, sorry, the show as well. Mm -hmm. Because they say early in the apocalypse, cities were dangerous. Cities were very dangerous. Because they were so, so claustrophobic. Yeah, I mean, there's, there was so much yeah. population. Yeah, yeah. And the virus spread so quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the closer people were. Right. So in the beginning, and we've seen this from the show, it's, it's you stay away from the cities. Yeah, you don't go there. But they get into the city yeah. and they see it's dead. It's dead. They see bodies everywhere. They have not seen or heard a walker. It's deathly quiet and it's just unreal. Yeah. It's, it, it's it was really, really cool the to panel, see. The artwork, the panel is really cool. Yeah. You see them in the middle. You see the skyscrapers. They just look dead, decayed, you know, 
nature and vines nature, all, yep. all over the place. Yeah, you know, it was looks, really cool to see. Yeah. And this is why I like groups going out and we get to see mm-hmm. things we haven't seen before. Kind of yeah. like when they were in Washington, D.C., I think, in the yeah. very beginning. Mm-hmm. So uh, we get the uh, our group um, up in a, uh, a rooftop. Yeah. And obviously they said, unless a walker can fly. Yeah, that's, gonna just, be, that's just what I was going to say. Unless they can gonna, start flying, they're going to be safe. Yeah, they're going to be safe for the night. <laughs> Um, and, and Sadiq obviously is 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 upset. It's very um, distraught. Yeah, yeah, says to Eugene, "You saved my life. You saved my life." Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, I'll they're, let you go into. Well, they're just having a little private conversation, and then all of a sudden, you know, he's crying, he's crying, and then Eugene is like, "What? What's the matter?" Just, or something. He's like, like that. "Just freaking tell me!" And he gives the bombshell. He says, "Rosita loved me," and you see Eugene's face in the panel, like, "What?" He looks like, pissed. He looks infuriated. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, calling back to previous issues, yeah. uh, you know, Rosita had an affair. Uh, the baby, I believe, was not Eugene's. Mm, uh, Sadiq's. Possibly. It's possibly Sadiq's, yeah. yeah. Possibly. And we don't she, was, she was up front with Eugene that the baby was not his, I believe. Yeah, I think she was up front. Uh, and yeah. that she had an affair. And mm-hmm. here we get confirmation, <laughs> which a lot of people thought for a while it was Sadiq. Yeah. And here we go. Uh, that's interesting yeah and you know Sadiq get ready to fly because you're going off that building yeah that's just what I was going to say we might get into this in our prediction video but Josh mentioned earlier that somebody's going to be flying off the building (laughs) (laughs) it's not going to be Eugene it's going to be Sadiq so a great issue we absolutely loved it I love you know I I love the issue of how it jumps back and forth and we really need to see more groups go out because we just we have not seen it in so long yeah it would have been really cool and just to talk about this real quick on we get one issue where Michonne's been out on the sea for a while Mm -hmm. would have been cool to see something like that too so yeah yeah, definitely guys let us know what you thought of issue 170 Uh, another great issue can't wait for this uh, you know this arc to to continue and see what we get. Yeah, so stay tuned for 171, Fear the Princess. We're Ooh, gonna be stoked for that. Good issue. We'll be getting a predictions video coming in for that. But uh, let us know what you think of Walking Dead 170. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, and stay tuned for more Walking Dead. We are Knock Bro Nation. We're, We're out. out.